All right, so today we have ourselves a MacBook Air. This one is an 11 inch, so the board number is 82000164. This is either gonna be a 2015, well, yeah, I guess it'd be a 2015. They never made a 2017 model on this one. Uh, and this one is in here because someone had spilt uh, kale slushy into it. Uh, so it's not turning on anymore. I went ahead and I've already hooked it up to my uh, power supply. And it's giving me a reading that I'm not necessarily too fond of. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn this on real quick just so that you can see what we got going on here on our, our software. So when we hook it up, we actually get a green light, but we are consuming 0.259. Now, if you've watched from any of my previous videos, that's usually a dead CPU. There is a lot of kale around this, the processor um, or on a couple of resistors on the back of the processor. So I don't really feel too confident in this one. Uh, so let's just kind of go ahead and dive into it and see what exactly is going on here. Um, we could do one or two things. We can either go ahead and get our power readings from PP bus all the way down to CPU vCore, uh, as well as hook it up to our thermal imager. I'm going to do the voltage readings first, and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and open up our flex board view schematics from Paul Daniels. And I've gone ahead and already pulled open this specific schematic. And what we want to look for is our power alias page. And it looks like that's going to be on page 60. So let's scroll down to page 60 real fast. All right. So this is gonna cover every single power rail on the computer. And the main one we wanna start with is gonna be PP bus. This line needs to be present in order to really turn on a good bit of different things on the computer. And it looks like PP bus, according to the schematic, is 8.6 volts. So let's go ahead and compare that. We have a fuse up here, F7140, and see if that is reading our 8.6 volts. In this video, I am also showcasing the one eye. I already have the software hooked up on the top left. So we want to switch our multimeter over to voltage. And the one eye, it's actually a um, microscope reading that's built, or a multimeter reading that's actually built into the, uh, the microscope. So we're getting 2.8 volts and climbing. That's not right. We're supposed to get roughly eight. So it looks like something is pulling down PP bus. I don't like that. <laughs> this one is probably not gonna be repairable. So if we don't have PP bus, it's safe to say that we don't have the rest of our power rails here. Um, at this point, I'm gonna cheat and use our thermal imager and see if there's anything that's getting obviously hot. So let's go ahead and unplug our power supply and open up our Kianli thermal imager software. All right, so the first thing we see is that we have a coil right here that is getting pretty warm. Let's see if there's anything else that's getting warm. Coils can't short. They're nothing more than just wound up wire. But it's interesting that that's getting warm over anything else. And there we are. We have a short 160 Celsius. Now we need to find out exactly what that component is. So let's switch over to our vision. And that is a capacitor. This one may be easy. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at the capacitor underneath the microscope. If it is just a capacitor, then we might be able to actually bring this one back. So it's this specific capacitor, and I can actually see it's bulging out right here on the right side. So let's go ahead and get our micro tweezers and our rework station and pull this capacitor off and see if this is going to bring back our computer. All right, so we got that capacitor removed. Let's take a look on our schematics and see exactly what that is responsible for. That is PP bus S5 high side computing ins. Let's see if this considers it a critical. It does not right now. So for the time being, we should be able to see if the computer is gonna turn on and we'll end up replacing this after the fact. I just want to see if that resolved our issue. So that's going to be C7434, which has a capacitance of 62 microfarads. You can see next to it we have a 1 microfarad, a 0 0.001 microfarad, or farad, however you want to pronounce it, two more 62s. It doesn't say critical, so for the time being we should be able to just um, leave this disconnected and see if our computer is going to 
get the rest of power. It looks like this eventually creates PP1v2s3, so th we could still potentially have a dead CPU here uh, because this line is responsible for LPDDR3. LPDDR3. Uh, this is going to be the memory, the RAM, which had a good portion of the kale around it, so if it still doesn't turn on, we may have to address the RAM. So let's go ahead and go back to our board here. I don't have my overhead camera working at the moment because we are using the one eye instead and I don't have enough USB ports on this specific computer. So let's turn back on our power supply software. All right, we're consuming 0 0.5 amps. Now that should be booting voltage. Let's go ahead and disconnect hook up our fan and see if we actually have a fan spin. So, this one may be fixed and just needs an ultrasonic cleaning after this. Actually, you know what, let's just go ahead and hook it up to our housing because I want to see if this is actually posting and if we're getting any type of image on the display. Let's do that. There's actually still a great bit of kale inside of this computer, you can see. So definitely going to have to clean this out. So what I'm going to do instead, since this housing still needs to be cleaned, is I'm just going to hook it up to a, the screen and see if we get a folder with a question mark showing that it's posting and looking for a solid state. All right, we have backlight. And here in a second, we should have a folder with a question mark. Aha! Success. So this was a successful repair. Thankfully, it was not a dead CPU. I learned something different because usually that much amperage consumption means that the board itself is dead. Fortunately, it looks like that a capacitor shorted on our PP bus high side computing ins line was bad. Let's go ahead and replace that real fast. Then after that, we'll give this one an ultrasonic cleaning, uh, remove all the kale out of the actual housing and call this one a day switch back over to the microscope camera. So we're going to need to pull a capacitor from a donor board. Now the nice thing about the 11 inch MacBook is it actually uses the same components as a 13 inch MacBook. Because I don't have any donor boards for the 11 inch, but I have plenty of them for the 820 Okay, so I went ahead and I just pulled up the schematics for an 8200165. That's just the 13-inch 2015 or 2017 MacBook Air. Uh, in the same general area of the capacitors, we have our PP Bus uh, S5 um, high side other ints. This one's different than the computing ints. But when I looked it up here on the schematic, it is still the 62 microfarad at 0, 2, 3 ohms. And if we compare that to our other one that we had here, our 8200 at 8200164, geez, that's a lot of number. We can see the same readings right here, 62 microfarads at 0 0.023 ohms. So let's go ahead and switch back over to our microscope camera and pull this from our donor board. And that's gonna be this specific capacitor. So we got a replacement capacitor. Let's go ahead and solder it back onto our donor board. Patient board. All right, so we got our capacitor completely replaced here. Now we just need to verify that it's still booting up. And then we'll call it a day on this one. Give it an ultrasonic cleaning. So let's go ahead and hook up our power supply and see if our amperage rating is going to go up. 0 0.3, 0 0.5, so that is booting. I've already shown that when you hook it up to a screen, we do get a question mark with a folder. So that one was a successful repair. So just to kind of go over what we were looking at here before we were getting a reading about 0 0.26, 0 0.28. 
uh, which is usually the sign of the logic board itself uh, having a dead CPU. But when we went ahead and we took a look here with our thermal imager, which was a really handy tool, we were able to figure out that PPBus itself was shorted. And so what we did to figure that out first was we went to our power aliases, and uh, then we discovered, and see that's on page 60, when we came here to our power aliases, before we, what we did was check the beginning of the circuit and the end of the circuit. So we attached uh, PPBus first, just because that's a pretty important line necessary for turning on the rest of the computer. Now, as we can see, PPBus, according to the schematic, is roughly 8.6 volts. And uh, we can confirm that now that we have our, our um, board actually working. Whenever we hook up our, our power now, and we go back to that same fuse that we tested earlier. Uh, I need to turn on my multimeter because it looks like it died. Measure that exact same fuse. Before we were getting about 2.8, now we're getting 8.6. So PP bus is present. Once PP bus is present, the rest of our lines are going to start turning on. And uh, fortunately, it looks like in this case, PP bus was shorted. Specifically, it was shorted next to a component that eventually generates our 1.2 volts, which will eventually make its way to uh, the RAM in this case, uh, which made it look like that it had uh, a, a dead CPU, but in this case, just looked like PP bus itself was dead. So that was a successful repair. Uh, I hope that this has been informative. We're just going to give this one a good cleaning and call it a day. So thank you so much for joining. I hope you guys have a great one. Bye.